This is pilot in training. Today I decided to go ahead and put together a small uh, vid for uh, some of those who have been interested in doing a ADSB uh, in project. Um, there's been a movement on home builds recently and it's become affordable for those who like to add a little margin of safety as you fly out there. Um, there's been a, a slew of several talented programmers that helped us uh, turn an inexpensive off-the-shelf parts to do an ADSB in. Uh, credit out to Christopher Young who uh, assist in this to make this affordable and uh, functional. So hats off to him. Um, basically using kind of a Linux Raspberry Pi computer module, as you can see there, it's a very small unit, uh, has USB power, all kinds of things, uh, microchip on it, it's very small, but this is the driving unit, uh, small computer part to make this thing work. Uh, it interfaces with uh, tablet apps, of course I use ForeFlight for that. Uh, the cost can range anywhere between 90 bucks, maybe all the way up to 150, depending on uh, what you like to do to make it more feasible, um, functional, lightweight. Mine's kind of large because I wanted to put everything inside the box other than the battery, but I'm kind of working on that on the side. The software for this is open source, so uh, you can go out to a site and pull down the source to make the uh, computer work for you. So let's take a look. Uh, first of all, this is a Raspberry Pi 2 Model B. This is 1 gigabit, um, 900 megahertz unit. Basically has um, uh, USB ports, has uh, HDMI port, and a power micro port and then a place for your uh, memory chip that you load the uh, open source software onto through your PC. So basically once you download the information into this chip you just slide it in here and lock it. So that's basically it. I went ahead and uh, purchased a transparent case that came with it. It comes with the kit, comes with the software. And I kind of basically just added it to hold it steady to ensure that it doesn't flop around. So I went ahead and added it to this case. I was going to add a fan to it, but that will probably be in a later date to see um, if it will hold the heat in the cockpit without adding an additional power source drawing off the battery. Um, comes with fins that you stick on. This cools the microchip and uh, it's pretty self-contained. It's pretty lightweight. Um, for this project I decided to uh, put the case on it. I didn't have to, but it came with it, so I went ahead and did it anyway and added it to it. Click it together, and that's it. It's basically ready to go. Um, this is your Wi Fi connector. This is the unit that allows you to transmit the signal from the uh, computer to your uh, uh, iPad or iPhone or whichever that can accept the signal. So uh, went ahead and added it. You just slide it in and she's ready to go.
Okay. Next, um, went ahead and didn't come with the kit, but I ordered the Nano 2 uh, SDR, new electric SDR application modules here. Uh, they function as a quality DVB receivers. So these are basically your radio receiving uh, modules that connects to the computer that connects to your antennas. Uh, these are uh, pretty accurate crystals, high quality capacitors. Um, they're basically radios. They range from 25 megahertz to 1750 megahertz. And uh, they're pretty good. They're compact, affordable, and they fit real nice into the unit. As you can see here, um, you can add one to the port, and I went ahead and purchased another one. They're kind of tight right here, so you have to kind of offset it, set it in there like that. So now the radios are added, you have your Wi-Fi, your software has been added through the microchip um, card, and that's it. Pretty simple, correct? Um, when I got the box, I wanted something large, so I purchased this one. Um, I seen it on YouTube, and I figured that I could put everything self-contained in there uh, to to make this functional. If you wanted to put it on your airplane's dash. To keep it stable and not bumping around, I went ahead and uh, put these uh, felt pieces on here, velcroed it in to make sure that it didn't slide around, and that allowed me to, in case it got bumped around, it would, it would kind of hold itself in there. So you have to watch out to um, keep away from the screws and what not. So there it is, it's sitting in there real nice. The issue I had too was the power port that you plugged in the, the power into the unit. But I really didn't want cables hanging out of a hole or whatever. So I went ahead and um, fancied it up a little bit. Make sure that goes in there, there we go. And added my own small cable that I purchased off um, eBay and connected it to the adjustable exit panel. So I drilled a hole that fits this female micro connector and then I just uh, epoxied it around here so it wouldn't slide in and out. So now it's ready to be powered up without having to get into the box. Pressing on, the antennas that come with the uh, Nano 2s are basic telescoping antennas that come with its own uh, connectors. It goes to the Nano 2, of course. And but what I did was you just add and connect these units to the nanos. I mean, you just punch them in. There we go. Clicked in. I went ahead and wrapped the cords up. Keep them in there real nice. And set these here freely to wrap around real nice in here. Nothing major, nothing difficult about that. These do have a tend to slide out, so you got to watch it. And then I said, how am I going to do the antennas? So I decided to make the antennas uh, come out this portion of the box. Um, so you can move it telescopically up and down. And this was my initial thought. Um, I was hoping it would work. It's kind of tricky to get these units 
in here, you kind of got to move it around a little bit to make sure that it's kind of lined up. Not real hard, but just kind of got to work it a little bit. I didn't Velcro the bottom. I guess I could have, but it's just something I have not done yet. Drill the hole just right, just to get this part in, and just enough to get the adjustable arm to peek out of the top. And then we just put it together. You still have to kind of adjust these as you do this. And then we'll try to put this on the first time. Let's see what happens. That one in nice. Now you have to kind of work this one in. That looks pretty good. As you can see, as you're pressing down, these want to get misadjusted on the inside. So you kind of got to work it a little bit. You don't want to be pressing too hard on it. What's happening is they're pressing down on the modules. There, I pulled them up. And there we go. Connect it together. And then you know, we just screw it together. I'll just do a couple so it doesn't come apart. And that's how it goes together. Pretty simple. Once you get the parts, voila. It's good to go. As you can see, the adjusters here. You can kind of move it back and forth. If you have to spin it, you can a little bit. This may wear out after a while, but um, we'll see. I may have to change the design if I do another one and do ones with the, the black high density antennas off to the side. We'll see. My thought was lay it on the dashboard of the aircraft and just um, up there on the console. But then I've seen people put suction cups here to the behind the window, suction cup here, suction cup here, and then um, run the antennas, ever how. Um, this way, if the power cord's coming down, you might be able to do it this way, off to the side. like that with the power cord on the window. It's a little heavy, not too bad. All right, let's hook it up and see if we get um, it to sync up. Be right back. Okay, um, because I've seen other things on YouTube on how the guys built them, I went ahead and followed their numbers, uh, specifically this um, 10,000 milliamp capacity battery um, seems like that's kind of the current standard uh, on building these and I'm sure it has a lot of capacity um, and drainage to keep this thing running for a couple hours I'm sure hasn't been tested out a long I don't know how long it's going to take for it to drain down but uh, it's a pretty solid unit um, it's fully charged has a battery indicator here and the thought was to maybe Velcro it on top of here as a standalone unit. And uh, plug it up. Seems kind of. It's going. See the lights? Now the question is once it, I guess, boots up, you. I can go into your Wi-Fi and look for Stratus X, Stratix, and click it. Once it syncs up, you have it. You can go to your fourth light. start receiving transmitting traffic 
I have it on street and radar. What you want to do is look for traffic, which has not popped up yet. I'm sure it's booting. There, it just went street and traffic, which I can change it to sectional and traffic. Looks a little busy, so I just brought the uh, ability to see it better as a street map if you're flying. Um, I don't have any antennas out here, but if an aircraft came by, I'm sure that we would see it. So that uh, seems like it's functioning okay. Another way to do that would be to see if I can find it. Okay, another way is to see, even though it's showing it's on four flight and it's working, you can type the IP address in your phone. This is 192.168.10.1 and the Stratix will come up and show you that you're receiving and broadcasting and it's connected here. Um, things start to operate on the menu. You can go and see if there's any weather. You're connected to weather but I'm not near an antenna to receive any uh, traffic. This is where you would start seeing traffic generated um, as you go into the cone or you go through one of the antennas and start downloading. This would start typing out aircraft number, uh, how high they are, their speed and everything. Um, AHARS, if you have it, I guess would work. This would show the towers um, when you start receiving them. This would log if you turn your log on. That seems to be functioning properly. Uh, sorry I can't show you any aircraft in the area, but uh, I have checked it and it does work. Every once in a while a plane will go by and I'll pick up on it. So um, that's it. <clears throat> I hope you uh, enjoyed my little pieces parts here. If you have any questions, you're welcome to um, contact me on this uh, YouTube channel. Uh, it was pretty straightforward, simple, and uh, have a nice day and safe flying, guys.